The pan is overflowing, but Eddie's not even sprinkling the salt in the pan. Eddie uses this frying pan as a shield from the barrage of eggs, and it looks like it's working, but then he gets up and he's covered in eggs. And what makes even less sense is the pan got pelted with eggs, and now it's clean as a whistle. Banana flavor, Eddie! That's a disgusting popsicle flavor. Ever had those Minions ones? And correct me if I'm wrong, I always had this assumption that bananas were yellow, which this popsicle isn't. This episode's all about the Eds trying to get a chicken to hatch some eggs, but did they ever eat? They must be starving. Even Eddie says, I'm starving. Doing chores, bites. No f***ing kidding. Sawdust is so heavy, and it's always lying around doing nothing. Useless dust from a saw. Those are some really good points, Eddie, which really makes me wonder, why the f*** does Rolf want sawdust in the first place? In this scene, Kevin's tongue is a bright neon green. The shed door is wide open. Now the shed door is ajar. Modern art sucks. We know that Jimmy has a picture of Sarah hanging in his bedroom, which is f***ed up, but the same picture is also hanging in his living room. Do Jimmy's parents let him decorate? Do they not have standards? Jimmy's mouth doesn't move. Maybe you should read a biography on Van Gogh. That poor bastard suffered way more than this. Could you spare some clams? Here's an idea. Instead of going door to door asking for clams, how about asking for an egg? True, you can't hatch a store-bought egg, but at least they can eat fucking breakfast. Also, instead of going on this wild goose chase, maybe they should just go back to sawing that log. That seems like a lot less work than painting an entire shed alone. I know Johnny tried to stop them, but between the three of them, or at least Ed, they could easily kick Johnny's bitch ass. The Clam Master has arrived! Clam Master sounds like a porno. The brown parts of the canker's door change to match the rest of the door. Eddie's glasses suddenly have lenses in them. Our mom's not home. Really? Your mom who's had three children with three different men isn't home? I'm so shocked! Monobrowless Ed, part three. This bumper has three X's on it, so it either has porn or booze. Neither of which is appropriate for a kid's show. Quick, let's get over to Kevin's. Kevin's? Jimmy's the one who wanted clams. I'll trade you for a giant teddy bear. The Eds are just going to take up Sarah's offer without even asking Naz for her racket. Just neglect her like almost every episode from season one. Is the peephole making Double D and Ed move? Or are they just jamming out to a song we can't hear? Giant teddy bear? Pams. All right. I've tried to be cool throughout this episode. I don't know why anybody would trade paint for clams, or eggs for sawdust, but why the hell would a little kid trade a giant teddy bear for plums? What's with the food? Good question. What is with the food? Plums? Clams? Paint? Rackets? Teddy bears? Anchors? Sawdust? Wait a minute. Eddie reaches into Double D's pocket without saying no homo first. My family will sit around this stove telling stories and roast yo-yo for generations! Unless there's an episode in Season 2 where you give the yo-yo to Johnny. Unlikely, but I'm throwing it out there as a possibility. Johnny's this way! How do you know where Johnny is? He's been popping up all over the place in this episode. A few of the clams fall out of the bucket and are somehow sucked into oblivion. The Edge run with the plums from the right side of the screen. So we can assume Rolf lives on this side of the cul-de-sac. But then the Eds run to their left with the sawdust. So where the f*** does Rolf live? Where does a chicken come from?